something very important. We need to understand something that concepts and principles in international commercial arbitration are very intertwined. They have to meet and match at a certain point in time. Now, when we are talking about the role of Indian courts for an arbitration seated outside India, we need to analyze the Balco judgment. That is, the Bharat Aluminium Company versus Kaiser Al uh, Aluminium in the year 2012, which changed the whole geography of Indian arbitration. Now, Balco stated that Part 1 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 will not apply to arbitrations which are seated outside India. However, Part 1 of the Arbitration Act will only apply to arbitrations which are seated in India. They, they might be domestic arbitrations or they might be international commercial arbitrations with its seat in India. Okay. However, if Part 1 of the Arbitration Act is made applicable, the Indian codes will need to rely on the permitted grounds which are highlighted in the proviso to Section 2, Subclause 2 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. But let us consider the situation where the arbitration is seated outside and the parties have made an exclusive jurisdiction clause that, the, that anything arising out of this arbitration will be treated and will be handled by courts in India. In such situation, Indian courts will have jurisdiction. However, in any other situation, Indian courts does not have any interference with an arbitration seated outside India. Now, if the award of, of an arbitration which is seated outside is to be enforced in India, that has to be done in accordance with Section 48 or Section 57 of the Arbitration Conciliation Act. Section 48 uh, talking about enforcements under the New York Convention, whereas Section 57 talking about the enforcements under the Geneva Convention. Now, if, like we've discussed before, if a country is signatory to both the conventions, then what happens is that the New York Convention takes precedence and we often go around enforcing the arbitral award under the New York Convention. Okay. However, if the award somehow breaches the conditions laid down in this provisions of law, that being section 48 and 57, then in such a situation, the award will not be enforceable in India. So, right now we discussed three things. Applicability of part 1 and part 2 to arbit and how it applies to which seats of arbitration it applies. If, uh, exclu if an exclusive jurisdiction clause is present, what happens then? And in the event that the enforceability of the award has to be done in India, how to go about it?